So today, we're going to be preaching from Isaiah 6, verses 1 to 9. You should already be familiar with this because we sang it. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The train of His robe fills the room. Let's pray. Lord, we're just thankful for Your Word. We pray that Your Word penetrates our hearts through all the marrow the bone and basically changes us. Your Word is transforming. Help us penetrate our hearts so that we can be transformed into your likeness more each and every day. For your word is powerful. Just pray open our hearts today in Jesus' name. Amen. You see what you have for us. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this scripture. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on the throne in the train of his robe, filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken the palms from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. And your sin atoned for. Oh, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me, he said. Go and tell the people. Be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Isaiah. Wow, what a powerful book in the Bible. The book of Isaiah. There's so much in there. And we know that Isaiah was a preacher. We know that he was a prophet. And in this time, he has an encounter with a living God. Well, can you imagine having an encounter with a living God? Wow. How would that make you feel? I mean, all your sin, all your dirtiness, all your filth you know, exposed right before God. Judah, the kingdom, forgot about God. They had turned their back on God. They were not following Him at all at this moment. Their faith was in the earthly king. Instead of the king of kings, the Lord of lords, they had put their faith in this earthly king, King Uzziah. They trusted in him. And you said, well, how can you do that? Well, how many of us here trust in our own government? You know, to solve our issues, to solve our problems, to make our life better, instead of trusting in the real ruler, the one who is the Lord, the one who is the real king. They did not revere God. They did not see God for his majesty. They did not see God for the power, for his awesome power that he had. They had just shoved him aside. This morning in our Bible study class, we, it was talking about commitment. You know, how often in our own lives do we just shove God aside? How often do we trust in our own judgment and not in God's. How often do we feel that we have the answers? That we know what we need to do? Without seeking God first. Do we? 
Do we see God? Yeah. Some of the time. Maybe most of the time. But do we, are we really fully committed as a body to seeking God? And that's what I hope, like, on Wednesday evenings when we get together. You know, that's what we got to be doing is seeking God for this church. What does he want to do? What's his will for Northside Christian? Not just for us individually, but as a body, as a God's body. How is he leading us? How is he guiding us? And I know as your leader, you look into me, but we all have to be looking to God as well. What does that mean? Do we seek God or do we serve man? Well, to me, it means do we get caught up in the daily activities of the church? Whether it's programs, which we don't have too many, so we don't have to worry too much about that. But, you know, on the daily running of the church, our daily finances, our daily, you know, whatever it is, fearing whether we're going to have enough, not going to have enough. Or are we concerned about God is our resource. God is our answer. Is our focus on earthly stuff or is our focus on heavenly? Where, what are we looking at? Are we just another worldly organization? And I've seen this in churches that incorporate business models for the church feeling that that will make them more efficient. And sure, many churches are not efficient. Governments are not efficient. Churches may not be efficient. But I don't think God wants us to put a business model maybe first over Him right. in yeah. church. Instead of seeking Him for vision, for direction, we rely on a business model. Not that business model in and of itself is bad, but we still have to put God first. We have to put Him on the throne. Do we have personal encounters with the living God? I'm just going to that you answer that yourself. And if not, why not? And I think it goes back to the word this morning. Committed. Or committed. How committed are we to God? Are we sold out? I could say for myself, okay, in this area, I am. This area, maybe not, you know? Uh -oh. I can't even speak for myself that I, I have to admit that, that I'm totally sold out in every aspect of my life to God. And those are areas that I have to work on. We should be works in progress. Right. 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 We will never be perfect. However, we need to allow Christ to perfect us. Right. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. It's a journey in which you continue to be growing every day. Verse 1. Who's on the throne? God. God's on the throne, right? Not me. No. Not Obama. <laughs> <laughs> he is the king. He is the Lord. He's the ruler. He's in control. And he's not going to give up his reign. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is sovereign. He is the one to be high lifted up. He is above all things. And as the song goes, all things are possible through him. He's majestic. Nothing, absolutely nothing has dominion over God. Hallelujah. Woo! Nothing. All right. Everything is under him, including Obama, yeah. including the government, including the people, including you. Right. Every single person, everybody is under God. He's the one that reigns. The train of his robe fills the temple. What's that mean? You know, does that even make any sense? What what's the train of his robe? Train is his power. And the train is like his very hem of his robe. Just the hem of his robe filled the entire temple. And it was to display and illustrate how much power he has. Mm -hmm. That the very hem of his robe filled the entire 
temple. That his power is everywhere. We can't hide. We can't escape. I think sometimes we think we have, or maybe, you know. But we can't. And everyone, one day, will stand in judgment before the Lord. That's right. We will all be judged. And what do you want him to say? Mm -hmm. Be with him. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want him to say? <laughs> what do you want on your tombstone? Yeah. <laughs> holy, holy, holy. The word holy uh, is it used in the Bible over 800 times. Okay. But here, because it's you, and it was always talking about God. They'll get divine, divinity, all right? But the fact that they use it here three times is very significant. It's very special. They're revering him very much in this uh, scripture in Isaiah. That not only is he set apart, but he's perfect. He's perfect. We're set apart. As Christians, we're set apart. So in a way, we could say we're holy, okay? Because we are set apart, okay? But also, we're talking about here... By using this three times that he's perfect. He's talking about God. He has no sin. Why? Because sin is rebellion against God. God has God. We cannot come before God as, as sinners. We have no right. Because of who he is. He has absolutely no tolerance for sin. We cannot approach him if it wasn't because of Jesus Christ atoning for our sin. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. His power is awesome. All he has to do is speak a word, and the whole earth shakes. Mountains move. Seas roar. Whatever you want to say. That's the power of who he has. All creation in his hands. Every breath we take is because of God. Mm -hmm. We were created in His image. We are His creatures. And unlike animals, we have a soul that can relate to God. Right? Mm -hmm. He holds our life in His hands. And He just speaks, and it's done. Creation. He just spoke, right? Creation. He spoke, and it happened. John Calvin, I'm not necessarily a big fan of John Calvin, but I thought this was interesting. <coughs> he says, men are never duly touched and impressed with the conviction of their insignificance until they have uh, contrasted themselves with the majesty of God. You know, it's kind of like flying on an air in an airplane, you're looking down, you're maybe at 7,000 feet where you can still see kind of little specks of people and stuff. And, you know, you see how insignificant, you know, we look like little ants, you know, walking around. That's how insignificant we really are <coughs> to the majesty of God. Yeah. And, you know, if, if, you're, if you're a Muslim, you embrace this and you feel... You can't have a relationship with God because we are so insignificant. There is no relationship. God doesn't have time for us because we are too insignificant. But praise God that he has the grace to care about us. Amen. He has a love for us that he wants to have a relationship with us. Amen. You're in trouble? <laughs> Usually <laughs> not. <laughs> how can we stand? You know, how can we stand before God, dirty, weak? We're in trouble, right? We can't. He cannot tolerate sin, yet we're all sinners. Right? We're not worthy. We have no way of justifying ourselves. There's nothing that we can do right. Right. in and of ourselves to make us right before God. Other, 
Our sin is magnified. Isaiah comes before God, and he feels completely exposed. All his sins exposed, dirty. You know, he's ready to God just say the word. He's dead. I mean, he knows he's exposed for God Almighty. And we all are stained. We all are marred by sin, right? And Isaiah, when he God appears, he's frightened. Right? You imagine? I mean, I couldn't even imagine. There's no way I can even imagine what it could have been like for him. The majesty of God. I mean, and just all of a sudden feeling dirty, you know, feeling weak, feeling frightened. But for Isaiah and for us to be saved, we have to be lost. To be saved, we have to give up everything. Mm-hmm. We have to come before the king, before the Lord, and give it all to you. We have to center ourselves on God. See ourselves for who we really are. Stained by sin, marred by sin. We have to confess. Isaiah's had unclean lips. Well, we know he was atoned for his sin. But what about what about what comes out of our mouth? Does our mouth praise God or curse God? Does our and where where does that come? Of course, it comes out of our heart. What we speak usually comes out of our heart. I mean, have you ever said anything and thought, where did that come from? You know, because you weren't thinking it in your head and just came out, right? Because it came out of your heart. Well, Isaiah felt exposed before God. Felt his dirtiness, his helplessness. But you know, God saw something in Isaiah. God sees something in us. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And not only is he looking for humility, he's looking, are you available? Are you available to be used by God? That's part of the spiritual gifts assessment. To help discover how can we serve God? How can we be used by him? Are we making ourselves available to be used by God? Isaiah made himself available. God knew Isaiah was somebody that would make himself available. That's why God appeared to Isaiah. And then what? Once... Isaiah was cleansed. Once Isaiah, the coal touched his lips, he was cleansed of all his sin. Fire! Does God use fire? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. For cleansing? Oh, yeah. I mean, a burning bush, right? Mm-hmm. Just one example. Burning torches. You know, different, many things that God has used fire as a way of cleansing. So once Isaiah was cleansed, once Isaiah was ready to be used by God. So what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I'm ready. Use me. Use me. He knew. He gave his heart. And God did not give him an easy assignment either. I didn't even get into that, but he want, God wanted not only and all the people in Judah hearts to be even hardened more. For this, so we're talking about the sin coming to fruition among the people. You know, we talked this morning about the um, commitment again. Commitment. What's it mean? Commitment. King of kings, rule your life. Okay? And I think we all, I can probably say pretty safe, all of us 
Let the king of kings rule our lives in some areas. Mm. <coughs> but then there's other areas that maybe we don't. <laughs> so those are the areas I think we need to pray about. Yes. We need to seek God on and see if we can't give him up. Because don't we owe him our lives? Yes. Don't we really? To give him control, live for him. And only after we're totally committed Will God reveal His will? Right? How often have you said this? Mm. Especially men. I can do it myself! I don't need help! I don't need to ask directions. I can find that place. I don't think those are words God wants to hear. Basically, we're cutting them out. I don't need you. I can do it myself. And I know we shared some stories this morning in areas in our own lives where I've cut God out, and it was a disaster because it just seemed too logical. Why do I even seek God on it, right? Just do it myself. Don't bother Him. I am the sovereign of my own life. I deserve to make my own decision. Is that... Our culture going that way, you think, a little bit? Whatever pleases me is good. The heck with you. No. Whatever makes me happy. You know that, that trailer I showed at the beginning about you know, families and the deterioration of families. And people don't want to commit to marriage. And a lot of children being raised out of that life. Okay. And the focus is, well, in Mexico City, they're talking about well, a two-year marriage agreement, you know, whatever that means, okay? And then you can choose them whether you want to renew it or not. I mean, it's just, the whole idea of covenant has been totally gone by the wayside, and it's just, okay, how about, you know, it's a contract, a two-year contract, okay? Make, what pleases me? I am sovereign. I am king in my own life. I rule my own life. It's whatever I want. And if you don't please me, then I'll move on. I know some of us have literally come to the end in our own lives, and that's when we bow down before God. Some of us have never approached that desperate of situations, yet we still have given our lives to God. You know, the question is, what does it take when we stop trusting in ourselves and we start trusting in God in every aspect? of our life, whether it's our finances, whether it's our, our, our health, whether it's our family, our relationships. Is that the way sometimes you think? God owes us. We're nice people. Yeah, we mess up on occasion, but you know, by the way, oh yeah, God, I need this. Please deliver. Okay. Who are we serving? We can be proud. We can be arrogant. Self-centered. Perverse. We can be rebellious. And I'm sure many of us have been that way at one time or another. What? <laughs> We got to get over this. I mess up on occasion. When you mess up, it's sin. Yeah. Mess up is sin. Okay. And just say it what it for what it is. Do we have a right to God's love? Well, only because of Jesus Christ, right. not because of anything that we have done. Only because of Jesus going to the cross for our sins. Can we even have a relationship with God? Is through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way. Yeah. Now, others may criticize Christianity. Say, you say there's only one way. We believe there's many ways to God. Well, that's what the Word of God says. There is only one way. I'm sorry. You know, I'm not 
trying to be exclusive, but that's what we believe. There is only one way, and it's Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if you ever read the scripture in the book of James about the tongue. Hmm. <laughs> it's, not very, it's, it's not very encouraging, but basically talks about how the tongue, what we say, and the words that come out of our mouth, how inflammatory they, they can be. Hmm. So the fact that Isaiah's lips were touched, I think, is pretty significant. Okay. Not only because of out of our lips come praise, but all of our lips come curse. Okay? Don't they? Yeah. Out of our lips come edification or discouraging words or bad words, right? Now, I don't know, for those of you taking the uh, spiritual gift assessment, any of you have got uh, encourager as a gift. But if any of you do, I want to buddy up with you. Because okay? <laughs> <laughs> the church needs encouragers. Okay? We need encouragers. We need hospitality. We need helpers. We need workers. But we need encouragers. We need teachers. We need them all. And we, if we don't, and if there's areas that we're lacking, we should be praying that God would bring those people yes, Jesus. unto us to help make our body whole. Right? So it's right. Why Christ? Why was Christ sacrificed? Why did He go to the cross for us? To atone for our sins, to save us. Why? Why? He loves us. He loves us? Why? Else? Serve him, maybe? Family. I think we're all... Jesus said what? Go make disciples. Jesus, or it was said that all peoples come to worship God. Do we have a calling on all our lives? It's through all scripture. To make disciples, to bring people, to make God famous. To serve him, to share him. His love with others, to witness to others. So as, as the unclean lips of Isaiah were touched by the hot coals, it was make himself available because now sin has been removed. He has been redeemed. And now he can serve God. And we're all called in some way to serve God. Is it essential for our salvation? No. But we do it because we love God. We're not saved by works. Praise God. Yes. We yes. never get there. Right. We could never get to heaven if we were saved by works. But we should want to serve God out of love for Him and love for one another.
somebody in their lives to share with them or that you are able to share with them. Because your heart should be the same as that of God. But no one, no one left out. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for Isaiah 
the prophet, the teacher, the preacher that he was, and how he faithfully served you, knowing that he didn't deserve to be even in your presence. And we have, and the people of Judah at the time forgot about your power. They forgot about your majesty. They forgot about your awesomeness and that you are sovereign. And unfortunately, many people today, we could say our country may be in the same boat. Lord, help us in serving one another. Help us in serving you. Help us in reaching the lost and making ourselves available. 